the story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. is just up the beach. Our intel indicates that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. Good aim. Now, according to the local home security provider, the house is equipped with multiple cameras placed around the perimeter. I suggest you get rid of them, 47. See them. Oh, poor bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork, all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The owners? Don't think so. The house is registered to a non existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Masks. Rope. Chloroform. Looks like another kidnapping. I wouldn't put it past them. The Shadow Client is nothing, if not industrious. Why is he doing this? Clearly, he has an axe to grind with Providence. Big enough to surround himself with murderers and terrorists. Big enough not to care who gets hurt in the process. He believes he's doing the right thing, I suppose. Just like everyone else. Found something. A file on Rupert Pierce. Founder of Dynasty Global. The world's largest internet retailer. Hmm. If Pierce is a Providence operative, he's likely on the Shadow Client's hit list. But it's not what we came for. Keep looking, 47. 47, that computer. See if you can't access it. Encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, 47. Ah, thought so. This should be interesting.
Here we go. For the office computer, no doubt. Nicely done, 47. Getting caught on tape is the last thing we need. I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage 247. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Well, I say stick to what you know. of one Lance Donovan, the VP of Dynasty Global. Uh-huh. Donovan is back in London, working. He's a receiver victim. swiftly and without question and your wife and children go free unharmed refuse or hesitate and your family dies attempt to signal or warn anybody and your family dies do we have terms not very convincing mr donovan take a deep breath and try again much better now you will take the stairs up to the rooftop helipad where your boss, Rupert Pierce, is taking his morning jog. You will inform his guards that you are delivering an urgent message. You will approach Mr. Pierce, lure him close to the edge, and toss him off the building. Hey, you want green tea or mangoes? What do you think? You heard me, Mr. Donovan. The life of your boss for the life of your wife and daughters. Shouldn't be much of a choice, even for a workaholic. Do you understand me? Very good. Now, go. If I don't hear sirens from downtown London in five minutes, your family suffers the consequences. Best of luck, Mr. Donovan. We thank you for your sacrifice. Is it done? Good as. And Mr. Donovan's wife and children? The guys will let them go at the stroke of midnight, unless I say otherwise. Boss's orders. You know how squeamish she gets about collateral damage. Ugh. 
Unbelievable. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, I don't think this is good at all. Oh? Hey, hey, at least the seat's gonna be warm for you. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. get past them unnoticed. I suggest you cause a distraction, 47, and make it a loud one. has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? 
Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past. Your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeier stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit. The real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye-bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. Talk soon. A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the racing mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Well, I always did feel that pink was your color, 47. Just stay right there, sir. The race is entering its final lap, 47. I'm telling you, Miss Knox is going to be pissed. I did the pre race checkup on her. Well, let's just say she's got a bad day. Moses Lee, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is nice on outfit. The way to the really brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She has to make sure you brought the documents. So, did you bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Come on in. Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox know you're here. So far, so good, 47. Now, let's see where this meeting is headed. So, uh, you here for a job application or what? Something like that. Nice. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little... I don't know. Off. For a job interview, I mean. My suit is at the cleaners. And you couldn't find anything else to wear. Correct. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. Hey, come in, guy. Just knock him on away. You have to be somewhere to here as soon as you can. So, Mr. Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to How the are point you, sir? of all business. 
walk with me. Where are we going? Don't worry. What am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight, you claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. I don't care if the information is true or false. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus Project into Tungan Valley Damage Control, as you claimed in your correspondence. I do care about protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the corner. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place and this country for good, and that will be the end of it. Everyone lives happily ever after. Two, you don't choose option one. Someone dies, right here, right now. Which do you prefer? Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get down. Next up, Robert Knox. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. This could be lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time, I tried to have a meeting with him. He had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the US military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Sounds like a way to get up close and personal with Robert Knox, 47. Mr. Mendez, good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Report anything suspicious to us, okay? Ah, uh, Ted, good to finally see you. I guess traffic was rough, but that never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But, luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary. 
striking an unseen fatal blow. A surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics, seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety, or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Make my day. Ready, Mendez. Pick any image on the table and scan it to activate Palace. Target acquired. WB. Well, how's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. I just think how much more we can accomplish together. My brains, your money. The sky's the limit here, my friend. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. I still prefer the human touch. You're part of an old institution and you prefer the traditional approach. I respect that. But like it or not, this is the future you're looking at. Autonomous synthetic systems will entirely remove human agents from direct engagement. I guarantee this thing will absolutely murder anything you put it up against. Sounds promising. So, Mr. Mendez, impressive so far, yeah? Let me quickly Hi. show you our on-site robotics lab. It's small, but state-of-the-art, and it's fully mobile, so you can deploy it anywhere. Greetings, sir. So, as part of the deal, Kronstadt will throw in one deployment cell per five units. Outfitted to enable on-site adjustments and calibrations, it'll be shipped in a bulletproof shell and can be dropped anywhere on the planet using the Kronstadt T-37 deployment drones. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKinnis know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. got every opportunity in the world to act like a classy lady. And instead, she runs around with rock stars, drives her precious cars, and acts like a rebellious teenager. She's almost 30. Act like it, lady. I think he's being extremely patient with her, to be honest. She's constantly dragging the Knox name through the mud. I don't understand why he puts up with it. Did you Collecting know pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47? Hmm. When she was 17. What are you thinking? 17 years old. Robert would be better off just... Don't move! Only because Jim Poe is a lunatic and had no... I'm ready for another demonstration, Mr. Knox. Great, Ted, great. I knew you were just playing hard to get. Let's do it. Let me give you the rundown again. All right, I think we can skip the intro part. You know why we're building this, Ted. We're building the ultimate infiltration unit. Human looking, driven by the best AI Kronstadt has ever built. A unit capable of full environmental immersion, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Palace is equipped with extremely advanced facial recognition systems, capable of complex skin texture analysis. Ultrasonic 3D information capture ensures the right targets are taken down every time. It's so good, I'm willing to stake my life on it. You know what? To do, Ted? Bring it. Target 
It's down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. Damn it, come on! Roger that. Damn. Waiting for paramedics. Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Ah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. Welcome to Columbia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado 
inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village. While Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself. And Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. What's up, man? Sit down, relax. The universe will correct itself again, right? I don't know, man. I've been like smuggling this cocaine souvenir around the world, right? I need to get it to this dude, uh, Franco. Man, it, it broke. It's supposed to be in one piece when I deliver it over by some cave entrance behind the pharmacy, but it broke. Bummer, man. Maybe just glue it together? I don't know. I think it's gonna ruin the taste test. This Franco guy is like a bloodhound, but, you know, with taste, not... So, a drug dealer from Sapienza has been testing a new method for smuggling Delgado brand cocaine into Europe, baking the substance into souvenirs, coated in a special anti-drug detection paint solution, the dealer has been traveling the globe, testing the method. However, he accidentally broke the souvenir on arrival and needs to mend it before going to see Franco. You know? Yeah, man, that's too bad. I'd still try to believe it. How may I help you today, senor? I'd like to buy some glue, please. No, I'm afraid we just ran out of that item, senor. I saw the last bottle to the mechanic next door. As soon as I'm done here and she's ready to hit the road, the money will be rolling in. I just need to find a chauffeur who's dumb, I mean, who's lucky enough to get the opportunity to drive her. Oye, oh, yeah. I don't know what's going to get run into the ground first. This gas station or you in your stupid schemes?
Pistol, man. Drippy. Hey, yo, there's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me. All right, all good. Go on. Ah, so, despite an annoying delay, it's finally here. Let's have a look. It got through customs without a problem, we hope? I had no issues. Excellent. We're not sure whether this will pass the taste test, but that remains to be seen. Follow us, please. Nice 147. And now for Franco to sample his handiwork. Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47. Yeah, I love to see her face. 
Huh. Rico Delgado's brother Hector is trying to win back his old flame, Andrea Martinez. Apparently, Hector has authored a rather slushy love letter. For one of the Sicarios foolhardily stole it from Hector's room during last night's party. I suggest you acquire that letter, 47. From what we know about Martinez, a declaration of love from Hector is bound to provoke a reaction. Senor, you're making us feel safe. I'll bet you any amount of money. Right here, right now. Miss Martinez. Is that from Hector? That looks like his handwriting. I'm on a strict orders to keep anything from Hector away from her. I'm just a messenger. Well, I'm not opening that can of worms. If you think it's important for Martinez to get it, you figure out how to plant it in her desk. No one here will touch that with the ten foot pole. Anything I should know about Paula? Paula? Hector's gifts are amassing outside the front gate. I almost tripped over them on my way out. Please remove them. And by remove, I mean get rid of. Entirely. Of course, Miss Martinez. I'll see to it. Remotely smells like that idiot. Got it? Yes, Mrs. Martinez. Ah, to hell with it. Let's see what that fool has to tell me. Martinez is down. Good work. I was in trouble. I heard fighting. Would have been in a bed of gas? Yeah, okay. I'll check it out. Andrea Martinez is down. What do you ah. feel? Oh. Hey, please. Is I there? need some help here. I'm getting on you. It's a reason. Okay, I'll sort it out.
So, the ever-classy Rico Delgado has commissioned a statue of himself to adorn the village square. Today's unveiling ceremony will feature a local band, and Rico Delgado will attend in person. I suggest you take a closer look, 47. This should be a unique opportunity to engage Delgado outside the walls of his compound. The grants are here. On to F4. What do you think about that? Does that foundation look entirely stable to you? Well, I'm not amazed on that. No. No, it doesn't. There should be a little crumbling around the edges. Then an agrico, eh? You know what I'm saying? Loco! I've seen right. worse. See you in church meeting? You shut your head? You crazy guy. <laughs> oh, who well, had to go on stage, I guess. But hurry up. Somebody, eh? So I'm told. Hey, did you see Pablo? Last night I saw an idiot who's trying to steal a duck to behind a bar somewhere. Oh. He can't drive for shit, though. Uh, I hope he's okay. It was time for a change. Oh, by the way, did you catch Raul? He talked about trying to take the midnight bus. That crazy fool didn't have any money. He must be by the cliffside. That's crazy. Selling. Sí, lo pregunto porque soy yo, dice lo que quiero. Poetic justice coming up. Where did Andrea get to? Huh? No reason to wait around for her. 
My adoring fans await. My dear, Stay away from my sister, you hear? People, Santa it brings warmth to my heart to see you here today. For years, decades, we have struggled against the oppressive forces of the outside world. For years, the Delgado Cartel has been a bull against those who seek to do harm to you all. Today, we celebrate this struggle and the victories we have earned. Today, I grant you this symbol of freedom and rebellion. Oh, no. May it forever All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit. Successful. Tactical targets neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message. Encrypt and send. source checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just a company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. Evening 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, we have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia, and one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. 
that Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown, but we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shaw, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Grey's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive Maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. The street gang known as the Crows are on high alert. They seem to be on the lookout for potential assassins and will be suspicious of anyone they don't recognize. I suggest you are mindful around them in the slums. Forty-seven, our intel suggests the Maelstrom is hiding somewhere in the city slums. I've marked the headquarters of the Crows on your map. It's me. It is imperative you notify me as soon as Sargar's barbershop is open again. He is an excellent source of information, and I want to make sure he understands who he's working for now. Signal me at once when the shop is open. That is all. Achai, Padma. Any idea why the boss wants to know when the barbershop is open again? Yeah. Sargar, the barber has a side business dealing in information. He basically has every snitch in the slums sharing the news with him. Boss wants him on our side. Barbie even came down to the hideout to be shown a picture of the boss so he'd recognize him when meeting him. Yeah, all the secrecy is so strange. You know the boss. This barber is tangled up in some shady business, 47. But even more interesting, he may have seen a picture of the Maelstrom in the hideout of the street gang known as the Crows. That picture would be very helpful to our cause. Says having a secret identity is key to what he does. I honestly don't understand what he means. Because it is just not like I think he must have thought we were going to kill him or something. He was so nervous. I'd be surprised if he even remembered what the boss looks like now. A child. He didn't bring the people Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck.
photograph and a note addressed to Sagar the Barber. This looks like a very recent picture of the Maelstrom. With this in hand, picking him out in a crowd should be possible. You could also investigate the barber shop and see what is going on there. Forty-seven, that man there. He resembles the Maelstrom. Try to get close to him for a visual ID. That wasn't him, no. What are you doing? You need to open the shop. There are people waiting outside already. I can't remember what he looks like. The guy the crows wanted me to provide information to, you know. Their boss. They showed me his picture in their hideout two days ago. But I was so stressed out. I thought they were going to kill me or something. I can't remember his face. What if he shows up and, and I miss him? Then you should go and explain it to them. They probably still have the picture there. But what if they hurt me? What will happen to you? Or if they decide to burn down the shop like they did with that other guy with the metal recycling, I won't do it. Pavel, I told you we would get into trouble with this snitching business. But you had to go and earn some easy money sharing information with the gangs. This is your mess. You fix it. What's up? All right, 47. We're open for business. We know what the Maelstrom looks like and expect him to show up. Patience and shaving cream is what's on the menu now, 47. I need to shave. Why isn't the shop open yet? Yes, finally! Shame. No, not the Maelstrom. Hmm. No, that's not him. I'm ready for you now, sir. Sagar's barber shop is the best in all of Mumbai. Mr. Sagar, my father sends his regards. Told me you were the best barber in town. That's nice of him. Who is your father? Bhavan Vaishnav. The name rings a bell. Well, he's a big fan of your work. I'm pleased. Okay. Good as new. As always. Beautiful work. Did you hear? The maelstrom is back in Mumbai. I heard something to that effect. What have you heard? <laughs> oh, not much. Just that he's back to save us from the evil forces that keep us down. I mean, life in the slums isn't that bad. If he can help get us water and power more regularly, I'm happy. You think he's here to help? Sure. Why else would he be? We're done. Beautiful. I've never had a cleaner ship.
47, that man by the counter. That's the Maelstrom. Well, looks like our patient's paid off. How about you invite him in for a close shave? You're up, sir. Thank you, my friend. are changing, my friend. Can you feel it in the air? My bones are creaking with joy at the prospect of what is about to happen. I don't feel anything, I'm afraid. You will, friend. You have an important task ahead of you, have you not? I sense that about you. Together, we will all release the shackles that have bound us far too long and rise up against those who seek to keep us down. Whether those are our friends or foes, a day <laughs> The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Let's finish this one. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one. is impossible. I explained to his employee that Miss Shah wants to meet with him, but he claimed that the tailor wasn't available. So you didn't just go inside and look? Only the royal guard can do stuff like that. I'm sure Miss Shah will send someone with more hands-on experience than me. He's the only tailor in town that can make that damn dress. That's what happens when you drown all the others, I guess. It appears Vanya Shah is in the market for a dress fit for a queen. She's sent after a local tailor, but for some reason the man refuses to cooperate. A man of your impeccable taste should be able to fill in perfectly for the tailor. What do you want? Yes. You, you there, sir? Please, Wait. one moment. Go the club. What are you going to do? Listen, I, I have to go out for a while. If anyone asks for me, just tell them I'm not here. Excellent. Let's find out what kind of dress a woman like Vanya Shah wants. Shah wants a cerulean dress, 47. Perhaps you will be able to source a roll of the right fabric at the local cloth market. How much of these? Ah, you're back. Ah, my friend, you have chosen well. Now, we have the best prices here. What do you say to 140 rupees per running meter? Does that sound fair? <laughs> no? Nothing? Ah, I can see you're a man of refined taste and a skilled hatter. My kids will only eat rice tonight, but it's yours for 105 rupees. It's a deal, yes? Wow. It's a deal. Ah, good, good. Take any of the bundles, please. Just one, though. Silk, cotton, linen. Beautiful colors, beautiful design. Great. 
Great. Thank you. Come again. Ah, it's you. Did you bring the cloth for Miss Shah? Yes, I have it right here. About bloody time. Come with me. Oh, don't be alarmed, by the way. Miss Shah takes security very seriously, so the guards will search you. Hey, Not to worry. I'm afraid your honest look isn't going to cut it here. I'm going to have to frisk you, pretty boy. Hold that position. We'll be done in no time. Okay, you're good to go. Miss Shah has been dying to meet you. It's not wise to keep her waiting, you know. I won't disappoint her then. That is a good idea. She's not been happy with the other tailors. A word of warning. Just play along with her eccentricities. She can be rather dangerous. Thank you. I'll do my best. Good man. Do well and there will be a lot of money in it for you. I know. Here we are. Just go through there. The queen is waiting for you in the garden. My boyfriend informed me that you had yet another child. I feel perhaps that is not the wisest decision to make when... In a financial that situation... is Vanya Shah. Self-appointed queen of the of Mumbai slums. Have extra hands to assist you with your income, provided the child lives so long. <laughs> that is the problem. Little Raji is not well. Five years, Mr. Hussain. Five, five years, my queen. Yes, five additional years of servitude to your queen, for you and your wife. In exchange, I will take care of the bills for your new one until she is old enough to work the spinning mills. That is my offer, Mr. Hussain. Talk it over with your wife. I expect your acceptance tonight. Good day. Ah, the elusive tailor. Here at last. Let's have a look at the cloth you've chosen. I want to make sure the color is the right one. Yes, sir. Of course. Here it is. Excellent. Finally, some progress here. Come with me. I want you to take my measurements while you're here. Smart work, 47. Shah will want to have privacy when measuring for the dress. I'll leave the final execution up to you. your back, please, Miss Shah. I'll just measure your arms now, Miss Shah. Turn around, please, Miss Shah. I need to measure shoulder to shoulder. Confirmed kill on Vanya Shah. Excellent work, 47. Just one target left. Let's bring this one home. This is one of the Mumbai chores. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. It might be worth looking into.
Ah, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai, and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator known as the Kashmirian. Karen Dahl, aka the Kashmirian, was born in the US, but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead? Damn broken viewfinder. If I can't adjust the scope right, I'll never make the shot. Good thinking, 47. Now, if we could only make Rangan appear in that window somehow. I'll never get that scope adjusted with this horrible viewfinder. What I wouldn't give for a world-class sniper rifle right now. Darwood Rangan, producer of mediocre movies and a full-time criminal. His brutality is overshadowed only by his giant ego. Darwood Rangan is confirmed killed. Will somebody please help me? Last visual of the perpetrator. You got him? People might be dead already. Cool. I'll check it out. The right door. Why did I then think that door would lead to this? Da Vinci meets Jackson Pollock. How is that even possible? <laughs> okay. Oh. <clears throat> According to records, this was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. It looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. You came home. I knew you would. You've come a long way, 47. And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison, where father trained us, shaped us into killers for Providence. Now, you don't remember, they ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. 
I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact. You and I. Do this, and we both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject Six. Your name is Subject Six. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were going to tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. <sighs> Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time, but... After Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote. It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away, he and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative.
I remember who he is. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right. So here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow Clan. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive. And we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven, I've marked your map with several points of interest. We're running this mission with very little upfront intel, but these locations could provide clues to help you obtain the information we need. Good luck. Oh, please, darling, I'm so hungry. Have you seen those beautiful patties back there? And Mr. Wilson just keeps standing behind the grill even though there's clearly no more gas on him. I know, it's weird. Why doesn't he go grab a new canister? I'm telling you, these new folks are strange. Did you see that Cassidy guy snooping around here? He's been looking at the party three times already. Why not just go inside? It's open to everyone. Yeah, it's strange, all right. Oh, maybe he's a vegan? No, I don't trust a man who can't eat a rare steak. The Wilsons are throwing a barbecue and everyone's invited. It sounds like Nolan Cassidy has some interest in the party as well, but for some reason, he's unwilling to go inside. Maybe you can help fix whatever's wrong in there, 47. You don't care about his food, Al. You should take this more serious. They're our neighbors. If they have secrets, we do.
Janus. Finally, an end to Janus. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like him. Still, we are close now, 47. The first annual gathering of the Ark Society. Hmm, that rings a bell. If Janus was its founder, perhaps he's still attending these gatherings, 47. This could be valuable information indeed. One of Janus's old microfilms. It might contain important information. All you need now is to find a device to read it on. Oh, hi. I'm on my way out. Bye. It's nothing serious.
And that is Nolan Cassidy taken care of. Both targets are confirmed killed. All that remains now is to find the information we came for, and then get out of here. to the file. What a stupid system. Record the surveillance in the attic, bring the tapes over to HQ and review them there. The recorder is perfectly capable of playing the tapes as well. Why not just keep them here? What? The risk the owners mm. of this house suddenly can be home. Cassidy is certainly keeping a close watch on Janus. I'm willing to bet those surveillance tapes hold interesting information. robe of some sort with a note from Janus attached. Hmm. The note is interesting. Janus has asked Helen to do a few repairs on the robe before he leaves for his annual trip. He even put a date there. This is valuable information, 47. Clearly, Janus is a meticulous man. This microfilm contains a lot of heavily redacted minutes from what appears to be a yearly event of some sort. Plenty of initials and project code names that don't ring any bells. Janus is mentioned by name throughout, however. This is a very important find, 47. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with a constant at an event related to the Ark Society, and we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, we'll make our final move. You make it sound so easy. Society. One of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite. Billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted. No names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You all right? It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but... Like it happened to someone else. <laughs> your gift and your curse. What they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes. Found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. 
we'll take it. How did you not see this coming? My God, we came this close. The old man could have buried us all, our families. Do you think you feel more betrayed than I do? Get some perspective, please. Janus is dead. Lucas Gray is about to join him. And a cornered animal is twice as dangerous. Let's be perfectly clear. We were not exposed. The threat is neutralized. We are back on track. Even so, from this point on, we expect you to take- No. There is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, Madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb. Only to find out he's a Providence operative. I'd been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Sorry, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Oh, we should have expected something like this. So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters, Zoe and Sophia Washington, two young, ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right, change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the archive. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank one of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have it coming. The 
the Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. Patrons, you are welcome to explore the castle grounds. However, certain areas are off limits, including the keep, which houses the members' area, convention space, and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for ARC membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All set? Excellent. Follow me, please. Washington, one of our newly appointed chairwomen, has prepared a brand new official ceremony scheduled to take place in the upper court. Uh, Hello, sir. See what's with our nerves The annual Phoenix ceremony it symbolizes the collapse of civilization from which the Ark Society emerges unscathed. Rebirth. I get it. What's new is that the master is... Interesting. Zoe Washington is going to partake in a ceremony, symbolizing the downfall of civilization from which the Ark Society will emerge unscathed. Apparently, a giant, phoenix-shaped effigy is set on fire with Zoe inside it. Well, I suggest you locate this master of ceremonies who lights the Fire 47. If this doesn't sound like an accident waiting to happen, I don't know what does. Ceremonies will light the effigy on fire with Zoe Washington inside it. Huh. A bit showy, would you say? Like what sort of a maniac would lock herself inside a burning effigy without proper measures? Extend kind of repel to an ancient temple who would get the draft Great. Let's skip. Yeah.
a handsome a pledge, and yet a drop in the ocean. Zoe Washington, the Ark Society recognizes you as our Founder's rightful successor, our inspiration, our guiding light, the custodian of our future. Excellent work, 47. Enjoy the spotlight. Patrons of the Ark Society, you are part of a select, chosen few. Our Founder, Janus showed us how to survive. But survival is not enough. We must live, and we must soar. The Ark Society must not only commit itself to survival, but to progress, be it our next home in the stars or the next step in human evolution. This is the eternal purpose of the elite. Not just to lead, but to lead from the front. When the time comes, and all comes tumbling down, when mankind retreats once more into caves of superstition, we will keep the fire alight. We will be the torchbearers, the trailblazers and pioneers. Do, do not feel guilty for your privilege. Be proud, be fearless, for the future is ours to shape. Anyway, the Washington twins found it first. Way I hear it. Hey, I got a space bubble, and you're in it. It's a Hello. Anyway, the Washington twins found it first. Way I hear it. Sophia literally Sir, has the necklace. With all due respect, hand. when Nathaniel I'm gonna kick to your ass. Triggers this don't get out of my face. Death, trap, and you know, murder and mayhem ensues. But I thought those two were lovers. And on and off. Currently way off, which explains the added security. I don't follow. Think about it. Why the need? So, according to its charter, the Ark Society collects priceless art and historical artifacts in case of a global disaster. And this year, world-famous treasure hunter Blake Nathaniel has donated an Aztec necklace called the Cloud Serpent to the Ark Society's growing collection. However, Blake fears that Sophia Washington, his former lover and rival, who has hunted the Cloud Serpent for years, will attempt to steal it for herself before it goes into storage. Hmm, could be just the bait we need. For an alarm system, we're all filthy rich. Good evening. That's him. The constant. Providence's top controller. Everything depends on capturing him alive. What? Hmm. Alarm sensors. You'll need to disable the system to get at the necklace, 47. Me plenty. Architect. 
Yes, good evening. Smooth, 47. The Sparrow's got nothing on you. You're Blake Nathaniel, right? <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, people have been searching for the Cloud Serpent for centuries. Wherever did you find it? Well, to cut a long story short, it began with a Portuguese galleon salvaged off the coast of Costa Rica. One of the long dead sailors had a tattoo etched into the back of his neck, and it spoke of a map to the mythical Serpent's Tomb, hidden inside the royal scepter of Montezuma. The only problem was the scepter, which was stolen by Cortez's troops after the fall of Tenochtitlan, now belonged to Esteban Montoya and the Moreno drug cartel. Safe to say that was, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting afternoon. See this scar? Anyway, that was only the beginning. Spiders, death traps, ancient puzzles, and of course, the Washington twins and their trigger-happy raiders. Wow. That is, is Sophia Washington, right chairwoman of the Ark yeah, Society, right professional right treasure right hunter, and Providence right. operative. Quite the resume. Not to mention, I Stealing from the Order? No Ark member would be so foolish or disrespectful. The patrons neither. Maybe one of the custodians took it to be polished or... Oh, no, no, no. I know exactly what happened. Or who happened. You do? Who's the culprit? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. All right, I'll take care of this. Back to work. Or whatever the hell it is you do around here. Man? Yeah, I'm gonna need some backup over at the gallery. Had a situation. Over. Good evening. Sorry, sir. This is staff this makes only. Sense.
let her go minimalist on the joint. Sophia. Blake? I almost didn't recognize you without a knife in my back. I messed up. I see that now. Can we talk? <laughs> this should be good. Follow me. Looking tremendous today, sir. Excellent, 47. Let's give Sophia her heart's desire, shall we? You've got one minute. I did wrong by you, Sophia. I see that now, and I want to make amends. Here, this is rightfully yours. Well, well. Look who comes crawling back. Leave us. You know... We lost three men because of you. Wickus was crushed by a rolling boulder. Jaco fell into a pit trap. And Zoe and me, we only escaped the arrows by using one of the local guides as a human shield. But this is a nice gesture. It doesn't even begin to make amends. I know. May I? Fine. But not too tight. You know, I thought about sending the boys after you. Grab the necklace and cut your throat ear to ear. You probably wonder why I didn't. Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to the harbor where it's less crowded. You can hijack one of the Archean boats. Question is how? He's not likely to come quietly. Unless you get your hands on a kill switch. Yes. That might just work. So that's one of the twins, 47. Holy hell, Sophia Washington is out. The Washingtons are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves, no signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Barnwood's assassin. Move. Heck, even ones that grow up together. How is this any different? My question is, why is it only replicating modern society being what it is? My guess Our is that no any more. impending collapse I will go hand-in-hand hand hand with the bank's new nuclear. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor built his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. Has Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you? I wonder. Just keep walking. Janice always found Warkmeyer 
Force project distasteful, not to mention inefficient. But alas, sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Sorry, I'm a troublemaker. Did you do this? What's his problem? Seriously. Anybody know this guy? You. Mr. Edwards, still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlisles, the Stuyvesants. Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. 
You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you were so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet, something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one, Miss Burnwood, is untouchable.